you don't get you don't get inaugurated and for the first time in our country's history as a woman uh, and Africa is represented here so fully mm. I think there's too many years of, <laughs> of being through too many kinds of experiences after a while you get hardened and you take it all in stride the good and the bad I think it'll be more international today. Mm -hmm. Okay, I want you to look at this one. And it'll be more women. Yay! <laughs> this is Star News Bulletin with me, Comfort Whitfield. Today, thousands of Liberians crowded the streets of Monrovia to get a glimpse of the country's new president-elect, the so-called Iron Lady, Ellen Johnson Salif. Salif, who will be sworn into office this afternoon as Africa's first elected female president, has vowed to turn Liberia around after 14 years of civil crisis. Hello, Liberians. The days of the imperial presidency of a domineering and threatening chief executives are over. I want to talk to the women. The women of Liberia. The women of Africa. And the women of the world. Liberian women endure the injustices. During the years of our civil war, gang raped at will, forced into domestic slavery, yet it is the women who labored and advocated for peace throughout our region. My administration shall endeavor to give Liberian women prominence in all affairs of our country. The future belongs to us because we have taken charge of it. Mommy always said to us, the day Ellen was born, this baby is going to be great. And so over the years, we always laughed and where is this greatness? <laughs> <laughs> and we just hope that this will be the realization of those dreams and goals. Here, here. Yes. This is Star Radio News. I'm Comfort Whitfield. Today, President Ellen Johnson Salif announced her new cabinet, which, as promised in her campaign, will include a number of women in key positions, including the Minister of Commerce, the Minister of Justice, and the Minister of Finance. Women have not been uh, to the same extent as men party to all of the, the bad things of the past. Uh, they certainly were very strong voices uh, against uh, the atrocities in Liberia and the war. And they fought very, very hard to make sure that uh, the democratic process worked this time around. And so this is our biggest opportunity uh, to change Liberia. Good afternoon. So we've been focusing uh, very much on getting the basic underpinnings of the fiscal uh, system back in place. Clearly, uh, the Ministry of Finance, as does all of the institutions uh, that we've inherited as a government, uh, has very weak capacity. Um, we have to be able to get payrolls out on time. We have to be able to start getting money into the economy. We're trying to correct all of these past lapses, which mm -hmm. we know were many, they were extensive. 
I didn't tell people it would be easy when I campaigned. The majority of the Liberian people I forget in the past and indeed want to put that era behind us. There are still a few diehards uh, and loyalists that, that want to keep bringing it back. Our challenge and responsibility is to make sure that nobody drags them back into so much suffering and death and destruction. They want to see basic services restored. Lights in our capital city. Water. They want jobs to be able to send their children to school. The things that people everywhere almost even take for granted because they're so normal. Which one are you missing? You have a lot of problems about passport. You hear it in the media, you read it in the papers, you hear it on the radio. We have to get it straightened out. The, the old system of paying excessively for so-called express service appears to be back. Uh, fees for the renewal of passports and are deposited in a bank. So what's the problem? I really don't know. For the time you've been here, the money you collected on renewal fee is all here. You know the executive order that says all monies collected should be deposited? You can't keep money here. You keep it and do what? I pick up my money. You keep it and do what with it? The money? Uh -huh. I don't do anything with the money. Well, why do you keep it here? For what purpose? I can deposit it in the bank. I can carry and deposit it in the bank. Where's I don't the, have... Where's the record on that? But we also have reports that people are also charging huge amounts for passports. It is true that people also take money from people. But it's not me. It's not me. Thank you, Minister. Okay then. Okay, thank you, Chief. Thank you very much. Okay, bye, sir. Bye bye. That's my president. <laughs> you saw how? <laughs> yes, that's my chief, uh, the president of Liberia. Uh, she's doing a very great job, and I have to be there to help her right away. This week, Liberia's new national chief of police, Beatrice Munasie, arrived in Liberia for the first time since she was forced out of the country during the presidency of Charles Taylor. How you doing, gentlemen? In her first police action, President Salif asked Chief Sia to begin clearing illegal market stalls from the streets of Monrovia. Market, then they will move in the market. Yes. Then this place will be used for the children. Yes. That's what we're meant for. You know, in the case of the marketeers, you know, everybody got rights. They have a right to sell. Mm -hmm. But the motorists have a right to drive on the streets because they buy their license, they pay their taxes. The market women have been understanding. They know their own minds with them. I think we're all together right now. Market relocation, I think uh, the Minister of Commerce who was chairing a task force can make a quick report on that. It was agreed that they would be relocated themselves on an interim basis uh, at the MTA yard. Uh, what, I, what I know we'll have to do at these temporary sites is to put up, again, temporary shelter because, the, because of the rains. So you have to get something with stakes and and zinc and whatnot to cover it. Going to shelter now, you're talking about a structure to support the shelter, then you're talking big money now. Uh, clearly we understand the urgency and why it's been necessary to go ahead and uh, pay for it. Um, we're trying to find a way to finance those requests, but we have to find a way to transfer resources and to make the additional resources we have 
available for things that they have not approved. Okay, yeah, hello, who's in charge here? So want to know where we are facing our table individually or not? Yes. No. The government, any promise, anything like that. You all do your part, we doing our part. Yeah. We can't do everything. We can't do everything. The government did not promise we fix nobody table. <laughs> You cannot continue with that kind of tension. Fighting is gone, you don't solve problem. But now we're all being rich. God, we've been fighting for a very long time. How can we come to one conclusion? The issue with the marketeers under control? There was reports about them going back on the streets. Um, yes, we're working on that. That is in the night. We see most of them going by in the evening after four. But we straighten out, we really give orders, so we go on the street twice. Make sure that they don't uh, come in there. Very well. Okay. Thank you. Okay, then I'll see you both shortly. Yes. <laughs> okay, I've We are here to enforce the rule of law. It's difficult, but uh, I want to prove a point that uh, women can be trusted and placed to dangerous position and they can even do better. basic numbers on on the on the debt we we've talked uh, about this 3.7 billion in the outstanding debt for Liberia you see it there uh, with the IMF of course as the largest uh, of the creditors uh, followed by the World Bank with the United States of course being the largest uh, bilateral creditor so that's how the debt uh, looks like Sitting here today and thinking of a Liberia of only 3 million people with a debt of some 3.7 billion, it's uh, quite mind-boggling. That debt is a drag on our ability to raise uh, new financing from our partners, and so it needs to be resolved. Unless we do that, uh, the risk of uh, a re-emergence of conflict in Liberia are all too real. Some of these debts represent bogus transactions. Prudence on the part of the creditors is being questioned that they have caused our young Liberian generation to inherit all this debt for things they cannot see as a result of that debt. As part of Operation Sweeping Wave, the President's campaign to restore law and order, the police today raided Monrovia City graveyard to root out suspected looters and drug dealers resulting into numerous arrests. Hey, no. Tell me, get me, put me in the room. Hey, get me, 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 get me. The graveyard is not for them. We have to respect our dead. And nobody come here. We'll keep chasing them every day so they better don't come. Taking over a country that have gone through 14 years of war is very, very tedious. The police do not have guns. They do not have handcuffs. No vehicles. No, no resources. Not even paper to write on. I will do this thing now. You're not supposed to be to the gray. Yeah. Every time we pull you, you'll go back. Now we too will not get tired. So what will we do? We can't continue the that normal time this. My greatest fear is that a small group might succeed in trying to return us to conflict. It will always remain a fear until 
we've done enough uh, in responding to the needs of the population rather than sitting around waiting for someone that may recruit them for purposes of war. while trying to elude arrest in Nigeria, where he was in exile, will today be flown to a special court in Sierra Leone. By agreement of President Ellen Johnson Salif, Taylor will be transited through Liberia en route to Sierra Leone, where he will stand trial for war crimes in the region. The longer we waited, the more difficult it would be. And the threat would not go away. As a matter of fact, it would intensify. It's a risky decision once again, because we do have um, some persons loyal to Mr. Taylor at home that have made threats. We will exhaust every avenue. The man is innocent until he's proven guilty. If they prove Charles Taylor guilty, I will climb up on this wall and take this sign down. Charles Taylor is innocent. national status granted yes. but one thing we should understand the message that the government has not done nothing for us to see tangible oh. but, they have another standpoint i tell you it's better than what a man has said today because yeah. people are not complaining yet yeah. like, are we complaining today yes. you cannot yes. chant the government first of all was a tyrannical oh. government <laughs> the government your child government no different <laughs> yeah, to do something, man, she has to do something now. Now, yeah, coach, yeah. they both try to force her against our way. And if they force her against our way, we'll take another step. Yeah. So let me go. Yeah, coach, yeah, coach, yeah, coach, yeah. Are, you, are you meeting the political party leaders today? Yes. Um, would you like to let us know what the meeting's about? State of the nation. Mm -hmm and to also listen to some of their suggestions and advice and see how we can be more inclusive, see how we can have more collaboration, support, and interaction. All right. <laughs> I want to make few recommendations. There is a need to have a government that is reasonably inclusive. We have many of these guys around here that headed these factions. These faction leaders, they are still around. And I want to admonish you to keep them busy. <coughs> we have some of them, the former leaders are saying, well, I'm making farm in my county. How sure are we that farming is going on there? <laughs> Madam <laughs> Brother Lang, it's a serious thing we're telling you. When they are part of this process, nobody will encourage evil things around here. Different areas of, uh, of the package, uh, certainly an incentive to investment coming in is uh, land ownership and development. Uh, some issues that were raised, um, land reform. I think there's some work in that regard. There's no doubt about it. Land reform in its, in its total sense. We know it's a problem, you know it's a problem. Uh, we're trying to get it uh, straightened out. It would take some time. Well, maybe we need to fast track uh, this part of what we are doing in Liberia so that uh, we can begin to touch um, the lives of uh, the people more, the grassroots people. The land problem in a way can be attributed to the war, to the fact that so many people were displaced. Unscrupulous people in an environment of indiscipline and lawlessness took land, sold it sometimes to two, three people, and it's going to be a very difficult task. I bought a parcel of land, and I started to build something on it, and someone came, so I was encouraging on the property. So I was arrested by the police, 
carried to the county attorney's office and were transferred in less than months. It is our constitutional responsibility to make sure that um, we avoid some of this land dispute. We don't want extra war to come. You understand? So, um, yeah. so when you call me, that will be here. Okay. All right. Now, no arguments will come more in the room. And that's not that's not the only case. There are a whole lot of cases like this. We said we said we said we if I opposite side, if we can negotiate, that's what we negotiate. That's what we want. For but I want to ask a question. I want to ask a question. Yes, I'm yes. saying that the only way this can be this can can be set up is that through the due process, just what the minister but just said. So we are here. Yes, because we can't get the document. Ah, so that's what I'm saying. Who are you? 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 It's not supposed to be that way. It's not supposed to be that way. That person has to put in the place. She's trying her best to put everything in the place, but they're not giving her a chance. Let me, let me be frank. The men of this country have failed all a lot. They have failed all their brought to nowhere. See, that's that one of the things that men can do. Yeah. And that they can open their eyes. I want to get the finance team in here. Finance is still, finance still has problems. Maybe the new team gonna sort it out. Madam President, I would be the last one to say or to suggest that the Ministry of Finance is perfect or that the Ministry of Finance doesn't have huge problems that we're trying to address. But our problems at this stage is not just the Ministry of Finance. People are not spending, they're not processing their allotment. Yeah, yeah. Minister, the part of the problem is in the Ministry of Finance. There is a problem in the Ministry of Finance. Because there's been collusion, we know that. People are still taking money in the Ministry of Finance. If somebody wants to be truthful here, do we say so? Mm -hmm. They are still taking money. It's both a corruption and a capacity problem there. And if you can't change the people, then I will insist you fire them and we'll go get young university student graduates and replace them. It's not a question now or you're trying to save somebody in his job. It's a question of saving your own job, saving my job. You gotta, you gotta correct that. Again, have a dilemma here. The problem we have as a government is when we ask about second programs and they get delayed for over things we have no control because of other procedures and processes, then we have a problem. There, there are many reasons why they're not moving as fast as possible, and the question is how fast the solutions are implemented. In our example, because their databases show that the country is still at war. Is something that is an international problem about post-conflict countries and that we learn from. It. That's one example. In other cases, it's our own fault. The government is already under serious criticism. If we can't get these programs going that will absorb these people, then we'll never be able to do this and we'll have problems. So we want the want partners to understand the difficulty we face here. The implementation of programs are just too slow. Deadly silence. I think we depend upon the support of some of our partners, but I feel that um, in many instances we gave them some of our primary commodities in return. We gave huge benefits to their corporations which operate here, so it's not one-sided. At the Forest Rubber Plantation, workers are again threatening strike action against the company, and two Forest security personnel have been killed in the last week. The workers are demanding the government enforce a 37.5% raise promised by then President Charles Taylor. 
Today, President Salif is suspected to visit the plantation and announce the government's position on the wage increase. And are you all live here? You work for Firestone? This is my living area. Is this the only place you have? That's the only room. Uh, where do you use as um, bathroom? No bathroom. The bed right behind the house. Wait, they get down before bed. Yeah. Behind the house. Yeah. 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 For what? No, I didn't. I tell you, you're not born for the hospital. All right, we came to hear we are sent to see we are on eye. Yeah, true. Firestone has been here since 1926. There is no reason for the workers in Firestone to live under the conditions they live. We are not going to accept it. We are not going to accept the fact that people live in houses that have no windows. That people live in houses where they're not schooling for them. Firestone has made enough money in this country to have treated the Liberian workers in a much better way. Our responsibility as the government is to make sure that the workers' rights are protected, that their benefits are fair, that they are treated properly, and this government is committed to that. Because that's the message we're taking to the workers. With all this big yam, is there any reason why we have to keep it for outside? Okay, Johnson, you're pretty brilliant. Brilliant point, sir. We can keep them behind the bench. Let's go get them. So we can just be sitting out there talking. There may be times when regional and international desires conflict. I'm not a perfect person. So when I have to make a political compromise, I struggle with my conscience. The country did wrong because they beat us in 1926 and they're not doing right by the workers. So we told them what you would do about better housing, what you would do about education. But the main thing that says 37.5%. <laughs> So don't clap for us. <laughs> but the president then, Mr. Taylor, he came, March 1992, he came, and he put out one law. So we look at that side of 37.5%, we say, well, this one here is hard. The problem come from bad government. Let's tell the truth. We can't force the company on that one. Nobody was willing to go and tell them the truth. They just expected here comes another president who's going to tell us and make a promise and we'll go back cheering, you know, exulting. And nothing was going to happen. I may face demonstration, I may face anger, uh, but I think in the end it's good for our country and it's good for the path that we've chosen. You know? Pushing. I'm pushing myself to do more every day. I wish there were more than 24 hours in a day. Well, basically, I'm a very private person. Unfortunately, there are many times when I wish I could do what I cannot do anymore, go into the supermarket and do my own shopping. There are times when I want to see anybody. I want to read a book, <laughs> watch TV, don't take any phone calls. Those are the times when I wish that uh, I could just be the old me.
tension between the executive and legislative branches of government reached a new high as the Speaker of the House, Edwin Snow, accused the President of bribing lawmakers to root out her political opposition. The resulting stalemate has divided the legislature into factions, supporting and opposing the President. Even as we make, and we must make, greater effort at reconciliation and unity, a few have not yet brought themselves to accept the people's will as expressed through the October 2005 elections. They continue to plot and to plan and to strategize. We will do all that we can to gather the evidence to expose the distractors. This president is not out for reconciling this country. This president is out for dividing Liberia, and we are calling on them to put a stop to it. They have undermined previous governments. They are now undermining the very government that they are leading in. Africa is going through a transition. Liberia is going through a transition. We want be charges and counter charges and that's what an environment of democracy and freedom does. It enables people to, to speak out. But of course, this dissent could be uh, dangerous. As a matter of fact, we've got recent intelligence that, that even put the risk at a high level because of all that's going on with the, the tensions in the, in the legislature. And we just have to protect ourselves and wait until things settle down. As part of the continuing struggle between the executive and legislative branches, the president today ordered police to crack down on demonstrations protesting against her government. The leader of these demonstrations has been taken into custody on the basis of no permit. Liberia has progressed now to have serious political debates. But trust me, in Africa, 100% democracy is no way working, especially right after the war. Because as the people will say, that's my right to sell in your living room. That's my right to scratch your car. I mean, they will misuse it so much that you will wish you never use the word democracy. Oh, why are we doing this call? Justice Minister. This uh, Mr. Molu, who was trying to do some agitation uh, on Broad Street, was picked up. I don't think they should keep him incarcerated. Yeah, I gotta say, we don't, we don't need to make hero out of anybody for nothing. <laughs> What's the point? They should let him go. Okay, thank you. They came in, they did the investigation. I have no means to challenge it. They still think their best guess, nobody's 100% sure, but their best guess is that it's electrical. And I must confess, I didn't expect uh, the kinds of problems that we now find we've inherited. When problems stack up, it has a ripple effect, and that's why there are the periods when when it rains, it pours.
streets in and out of Monrovia have been blocked by retired soldiers from the armed forces of Liberia. The soldiers who were forced out of work under the comprehensive peace agreement claim they have yet to receive their full back pay and pensions. Accountability and transparency is built into this. So the people know how much money comes in, who's, who has a signatory to the account, and all of these things. Uh, okay. If the president cannot see out now, then of course these men will have to come out in the street. Seriously. Yeah, we are not going to condemn anything here. This country is ours. <laughs> I think I must be responsive to any group of people, whether they're retired soldiers or any groups that have true grievances. Even if they gather and there's risk to my safety, I take the risk. No way. And there will be no Christmas. No way. That one there, when you say that one there, then a problem. Nobody said that either. Uh -huh. But that one the people were saying to say, that you all say I will make war. No, 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 no. As long as you are peaceful, you have every right to present your grievance to the government and we find a solution together. Isn't that the right way? That's the right way. That's the right way. Hello! We have finally met the president. And I have a message for you. Therefore, let everybody go in the city hall. What solution do we have in our meeting with them today? What can we offer? What can we promise? What can we draw the line in the sand and say, this we will not do? With regards to salary arrears, that's where you probably need to say something on salary arrears because it's the last cushion for some of them in terms of cash. My understanding is that those payments have been made. Complete. Everybody received their full benefits in keeping with that agreement. Yes, ma'am. So the only other issue that may have <clears throat> some, some uh, justification, pension. From the AFL side, it's about 5.56 million US dollars. Oh, that money. That's 21 months, uh, yes. 21 to 25 oh. months. I, like I say, Christmas in the air. Part of the agitation for Christmas money now. That's, that's, yeah. exactly, that's uh, exactly what it is. <laughs> we have to say to them, the salary arrears will be retired over a three-year period because the government does not have the resources. Thank you all. Please sit down. It's been a long day for you. It's been a long day for me. We are happy to see you this time around. Um, to me, it was like a disgrace to, to us. I'm 28 years in the service. I don't want to work again. Just if I get what I'm supposed to receive, I got a problem. That one, you are, you are, you are yes. correct. You are duly entitled to be retired yeah. with honor and mm -hmm. dignity and respect. Yeah. And you will get that one. Yeah. Those that will die, their money is still there and their beneficiary need their money. Why are they doing with the money? I must listen to them in a way that says, I want to hear you. I understand your plight. And that's the Uma approach. And it usually brings a positive reaction because I'm coming as a mother to listen to them. Our ma, Christmas coming. That the bottom line. Oh, yeah. That one, the president. Christmas coming. We know the condition of the government. But we ourselves, we are dying too. You look at who army did, uh, 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 deactivate them. The people, they see army local and say, we're stupid. We are stupid. You're a soldier. You stay there. You stay there. You look this. You're stupid. On the other hand, and when people act out of order, you know, I can have an effective response that will keep them in order. Well, you are saying, you want me to talk, what's so you're to me? 
We got many people out there in the villages who today are saying, you're being the same people that are the same people who beat us, that are the same people who kicked us, that are the same people who poor in jail, that are the same people who kill us. Your cows in the villages poor today and you're giving them all the money because they get on the street. We gotta deal with that too. How do we respond to those people in the villages? The people who got taken out of their homes because SSS and Warren faction went into their villages, took all of their things, made all of them run, killed some of their people. What do we tell them? Every time you make the man, we get you money. What more tell them? We gotta take care of them too. They were the victims. They were the true victims of the war. And those are the people we are concerned about. But don't stand up there and say you high and mighty. Don't forget those poor people out there that you have impoverished. Yeah, okay, but anyway, we'll see what we're able to do. Okay. Madam, thank you very much for all you are doing and continues to do. I promise you, as of tomorrow, you will not see tension no more. That's good. So, country recommendation, then we'll yeah. see how we deal with it. Okay. All right. That's good. Okay, thank you all. Eh? Thank you. streets were today lit for the first time in over a decade. While the president had praise for her administration's achievements in 10 months, she also expressed continued frustration that many projects are impeded by Liberia's stalled efforts at debt relief. The process has not worked as well, I think, as we would have liked in terms of the involvement of of the partners uh, fully. It's a bit of a roller coaster, this arrears parents thing. We were uh, very, very encouraged a couple of weeks ago uh, when the bank, the World Bank, had, had made the, the decision to proceed to their board. We seem to have hit another roadblock again, and I think something has to give. And I must express disappointment and say now we'll have to look at all kinds of other options. I mean, we can't do all that we can as a country and a government to do the right things. And then you have to, you start backtracking and you and you start changing. We get assurances that we're going forward. I, I wonder whether there's there's there's, uh, there's there's true commitment here. Whether this partnership is real, or whether we're playing games, and whether you know we ought to look at all of our other options. We don't want to be hostage to to, to the low geopolitical games that are played. You know, if we can go beyond the traditional partnership, we got to find a way where we can respond to the needs of the people. Tomorrow, we'll be announcing officially the visit of the Chinese president. They're very serious. In fact, what they said is that they represent just the tip of the iceberg. So I think we've got a real window of opportunity with that part of the world, and we need to follow up on it. Thank you. There's potentially huge uh, financing from China that we want to benefit from. One of our challenges is to find uh, creative ways to, to draw on Chinese assistance without contravening some of our other commitments to our other partners, and in particular, powers like the United States, for example. came out in huge numbers. We're hoping that China will, will help to accelerate our development and they'll be able to point it to the, to the day that started it all and set us on and accelerate back. So we're all pleased. He's here. You'll be seated in Madam President. Madam President. Uh -huh. Pleased to welcome you uh, in our office. As a matter of fact, it's our Minister of Foreign Affairs <laughs> office. <laughs> 
which you, which China has been very kind to fix for him. Mr. President, I have not seen the Liberian people turn out in the numbers like they turn out today. I think that tells you the warm feeling that Liberia has for China and the strong relationship with our people. So this visit for us is truly historic. 表达了这个欢迎之情，我非常感动。Well, to be very frank with you, Madam President, I was very much moved by the scene on the street. How did you leave it with the with the with the Chinese? Because somehow it seems to me that there's this large uh, cake that you really ought to get a slice of it. Um, from the, Chinese. from the Chinese. So that's one line. And then there's the other line is the US. And, and you can tell the Americans that the Chinese made you this offer. Uh, <laughs> then, then I think one could get the IMF to speed it up in order to liberate that money. So go for the jugular. Yeah. His point is by having such an offer in your hand going to them to say, yeah, we know we can't do this, but just look at the potential. Mm -hmm. You're not helping us. You're not allowing someone else to help us, I yeah. think. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Today I'm going to meet with President Bush. Just let him know how well we're doing and guess his political blessings for for the um, support on our debt. China is still way down on the totem pole when it comes to partnership and support for Liberia's development. They're just starting. Yes, they have big plans. Yes, they have big appetite for raw material, but. Uh, for us, the United States relationship is still the number one. They set the pace. When, when they take a step, much of the rest of the world follow, including China. Then I'm out of here and I get away from this ice. <laughs> uh, Madam President, thanks for coming. I'm thrilled to call you friend. And we want to help you. We really do. As we told you, we just needed to get this debt off our backs. That's right. Um, you, were, you were wondering whether or not it was possible to achieve your dreams. And you asked for our help. I was impressed by your spirit. And so I pledge our ongoing help. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you very much. The United States currently holds $391 million in outstanding bilateral claims on Liberia. We will cancel that debt, all of it, under the framework for highly indebted countries. We've started, we've started. It's a long road. It was always going to be a long road. We need time to make the, more progress and then sustain the effort to make the progress we have to make in Liberia. On Sunday, uh, some arms arrived from Nigeria. Well, make me feel like a real woman. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It has been a good year, but, but a tough, tough year. It has, it has been a fruitful, but a challenging first year. Today, 
We can walk with pride and dignity. Liberia. All of the progress that we have made can be attributed to the fact that we've got strong women leadership in the government. These are all strong women that have led the, the processes of change and renewal. With all the problems and, and all the scares, I remain optimistic that, um, that Liberia will rise again.